Hello everybody, Snow Matrix here with a video to show you guys how my preparations are going for the Cape Raft Trail. For my navigation, I have these purpose made maps of the trail along with a guidebook. My primary navigation will be using the View Ranger app on my smartphone, which I have downloaded the whole of Scotland's outdoor maps onto the phone, meaning that I will only need GPS signal to know exactly where I am. The first change is to my rucksack. I'm going to be using my Osprey Exos 58 instead of my 48 rucksack because I will need the extra capacity to carry a good amount of food on this, the most remote, unofficial trail in Britain. Next change is to my footwear. As my last Sportivas have done two West Highland ways, a Great Glen way and a Hebridean way, I thought they had earned their place on my shoe rack hall of fame. <laughs> These Salomons are a new purchase and they come highly recommended for comfort, protection and lightness. I've broken them in by walking sections of the London Loop and in Epping Forest so they are ready to go. I've also added a waterproof sock to my regular darn tough socks for the bogs and river crossing that I will encounter on the way to the Cape. Ok, now onto the electronics. I've had a few questions about what I use to film my adventures on. My Great Glen videos were filmed using my new Galaxy S9 Plus smartphone. For the Cape Raft Trail I have added a GoPro Hero 6 to my recording devices. Normally I would take two anchor power cores to help power the equipment, but on the remote Cape Raft Trail I have added an anchor solar charger to my kit. I have heard good things about the latest solar chargers from a couple of YouTubers who have used them on the Cape Raft and other routes, and since I will be going in late August, early September, there will hopefully be ample daylight to charge my power cores. I've also added an extended battery case to my S9 Plus that doubles its battery capacity and can also be recharged with the power core or the solar charger. If you saw my previous West Highland Way and other long distance trails video, you would have seen me using the Firmares Neo Air X Lite in my rucksack. On my five favorite items video, I picked the winter version of this X-Bed Air mat. I was so impressed by the performance and comfort of, the, of that mat that I sold on my firm rest for nearly the price I paid for it and bought this summer free season version. One of the problems with the firm rest is that it develops mold and mildew inside when you blow it up using your mouth. Firm rest do not supply a blow bag as standard with the Neo Air x Lite. X-Bed on the other hand do with this mat. Blow bag, which doubles as an ultralight stuff sack too, is very easy to use and only takes about three repetitions to blow the airbed up, which is brilliant after a hard day's walk. The Cape Raft Trail is not a waymarked official route. There are paths to follow, but there will also be river crossings to deal with, so to keep water out of my boots, I will carry these aqua shoes to use when needed. They also double up as camp shoes. Now a look at the front of my pack. I have changed the two 500 milliliter bottles to one 1 liter bottle. I managed to find this z Pax holder on eBay and as the item was already in the UK I snapped it up. The two 500 milliliter soft flasks were just too fiddly to fill up on the trail. I use these lightweight S carabiners of various sizes to attach the kangaroo pouch. It makes it very easy to get it on and off. Here's a closer look at how these items are attached to the strap. A tip for you guys is to use one of those charity bands to make an attachment point if one does not exist on the strap. Works very well.
I use a big orange S carabiner that's impossible to miss when you have to get the pack off in a hurry. This ultralight pouch has many uses. I use it to keep my water filter equipment ready to access without having to open the main rack sack compartment. I have it attached to the rack sack and it fits nicely inside the outer stuff pocket of the Exos. Just a quick look at what I have in the outside pockets of the Exos. I won't go into details as I, as I have already covered these items in my previous video. The link in the description if you haven't seen it. As you can see I like to keep an ordered rack sack. I'm not one of those people that likes to stuff everything in a black bag inside the rack sack to save some grams. Having to go digging inside the pack to find what I'm looking for would drive me insane. I use ultralight stuff sacks though, so I do save a few grams here. <laughs> Okay, now for the main reason I'm using the Osprey Exos 58 instead of my 48, the food load. The Cape Raft Trail is very remote, you will need to carry food. This is all about the calories here and I have found these freeze dried food much more palatable to me than dehydrated food. There will be some opportunities to buy some real food along the way and I will never pass up that opportunity. <laughs> These are quick and easy to use and are very light compared to those real food pouches which would make the pack far too heavy. On the Great Grand Way I didn't carry any food. I just used these energy smoothies and power chews and feasted on fish and chips and steak dinners when I passed through a couple of large villages towns. There will probably be no such delights on the Cape Wrath Trail though. <laughs> These really do feed your leg muscles, the energy they need. They do weigh a bit in the pack, but once you start the walk, you will drink and munch your way through that weight in next to no time. <laughs> Yet again, I will be going with my nuclear proof Terra Nova. Even though I have the Terra Nova Solar Photon 1, I will continue to use my old friend, the Polar Light 2 Micro, for the Cape Wrath Trail. It's twice the weight at 1.7 kilograms, but I have been on many adventures with it. I trust it. It pitches with its inner tent and outer fly sheet joined together. So if it's raining, the inner tent will not get wet, unlike the Photon. It's a four season capable tent that will take a snow load and sheds the wind brilliantly, thanks to its low profile design. It's very spaced inside for one person. It was marketed as a two man tent but that would be a bit of a squeeze unless you were really good friends. It's a low profile tent too. That's what makes it so good at cheating the wind, but that does mean the head height is limited inside, so it would not suit a very tall person. Terra Nova don't make this tent anymore. I don't know why they discontinued it because I wouldn't sell it for three times the 270 pounds I paid for it, or swap it for any of their new four season backpacking tents. Thank you guys for watching and as always, see you out there and on YouTube.